Hey everybody, I am back after a short hiatus. Uh, last week I had a three day video shoot here in Jackson Hole that ended up being a six day shoot. So I got a little behind and took some time off the, the vlogging and the YouTube thing, but uh, I wanna get back into that. But I did film quite a bit of our shoot and we'll be coming with you a longer edit coming soon. Um, we we basically had three early, early mornings between minus 15 and minus 30 degrees. One day we had almost a 60 degree swing in temperatures from the early morning, minus 30 to almost 30 degrees um, Fahrenheit later in the day. So it was quite a shoot, um, but a little bit longer than I expected. So I'm back at you now and we'll get back into kind of some regular vlogging, um, but look forward to that longer edit coming soon. The topic of that video will be um, on my tips and my experience of how to follow your passion and maybe turning your your passion into a, a lifestyle slash career, that type of thing. So look forward to that. But anyways, um, we've got a beautiful spring day, but still lots of snow snow to be melted but days like this the snow goes really quickly because it, it does warm up it's probably i don't know maybe close to 40 degrees fahrenheit right now so really nice um as long as the sun's out in jackson hole it's 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 beautiful so um but looking forward to snow melt to get on the track which is what I'm going to talk about today, and as the snow starts to melt around here, I'm able to get on um, eventually trails. May 1 trails open, so I've got a few months yet, but I'm starting to prepare my body for the downhills. And specifically as a preventative measure for my IT bands. Um, I have great IT bands, but notoriously this... As spring approaches the opening of trails in Jackson Hole and for my athletes around the world, um, I'm really, really focused on preventing IT band trouble and really strengthening the glutes and doing a lot of eccentric work leading into um, the opening of the trails and more downhill running. Um, so it's, it's really, really crucial to start focusing on this type of strength, eccentric strength, to prepare your, your body for more downhills as you approach summer. Um, so what I did today, and I was, gonna, I was gonna vlog while I was out there, but it was such a nice day and I was in a good groove with my workout. I just said, I'm gonna come back here and sit and talk to you guys and explain what I did today. So I just did a quick warm up around the, around the neighborhood and just behind me here, um, part of the bike path, I have a, a short steep hill and on the back side of that is a longer gradual hill. So it's perfect for what I did today. So got my warm up in. Set number one, I did 10, about 40 second uphill steep repeats building to my P105 wattage. Um, that's kind of irrelevant um, if you're not training with wattage, but essentially these are I would say based on the 45 seconds in duration, I would consider these moderately hard. They were challenging, but they were certainly not max effort. And I would consider maybe the last three or four were on the hard side. So in general, these are moderately hard. Um, again, train, don't strain. I was consistent with them and that's the key. I was consistent with all 10. Okay, so 10 45 second uphill repeats, nice, strong, powerful, really working on good form, real good push off and good power. Of those first five coming back down the hill, I did eccentric drills, meaning eccentric. I'm working on the landing part and using the downhill as training that eccentric landing. So I basically did a variety of bounding, skipping, hopping downhill, very easy but just getting my body used to that down that downhill or that eccentric landing and loading as I'm running downhill. So again, it was not taxing. It was just getting my body used to that downhill landing. So again, those first five, that was my recovery, okay? Then for the last five of my uphill 
10 repeats, I focused on building them a little bit stronger. And these were kind of what I would consider maybe a little bit more on the harder side, as I mentioned. Um, so I focused on doing those. My downhill or my recovery phase was just normal running with very, very short, quick steps. So I got a little bit more recovery than I was during my first five where I was bounding and jumping and hopping. Okay, so I wanted to get just a little bit more recovery for my just a little bit harder uphill repeats. Okay, so that was kind of those last five were kind of the meat of my uphill repeats working on strength and power and force. Then after that 10 by 45 second set, I ran a little bit to the other side of the hill and did where this is the, the hill that's more gradual and a little bit longer. And I did about 45 seconds faster downhill running. Okay. And that was the key. I, I did five of these. And this is really kind of the first one I did of these this year on dry pavement. So I wanted to start conservative. So I did five 45 second downhill fast running. Okay. The key with these, again, I'm working on that eccentric, getting my body used to that landing. But the key here is that I'm only running as fast as I can while still having a very, very good forefoot to heel strike underneath me. And that's the key. Okay. And that's where the strength training comes in is that how I'm landing dictates how well I'm using my muscles. So I want to land very well. So it's underneath me, forefoot to heel. Okay, so I'm only running as fast as I can to achieve that as I'm running fast downhill. Okay, if I'm running too fast and that speed is forcing me to have to heel strike and break, I'm running way too fast and I'm defeating the purpose of this type of strength training. So I back off a little bit and have that good forefoot strike. That's the key behind doing these right and preserving your body and the purpose of doing is of activating the glutes and activating muscles in a certain way so you're not overtaxing your IT band, which is the common way you ha begin to have IT band trouble from the downhill is you extend and heel strike and running too fast and not having the awareness of how you're running downhill. Okay, so we're strengthening that and we're teaching your body from a neuromuscular standpoint of striking the ground under you. So as you hit more and more trails, your body's used to that, that, that type of strength. Okay. So opposite of this five downhill repeats, my recovery phase was now coming back uphill. So what I did is I jogged very, very slowly, but with very, very high cadence, very, very short steps, almost like unnaturally looking. Okay. And the key here is now still with a good four foot strike, I'm working on that elastic energy that I talk a lot about in a lot of my videos. That's so important. So now I'm a recovery phase. Hey, I'm running fast downhill. I don't need a ton of recovery going back up. So again, what I'm doing is nice, short, easy jogging, but with very, very high cadence back up the hill, working on getting off my foot and creating that elastic energy training. That's so, so important for, for faster speed, strength training, and for longevity and treating your body well. So, um, that was my workout today. And I, I finished it with about a five minute, just good, strong tempo effort to kind of pull all this, all this neuromuscular training that my brain's dealing with and my body's dealing with into no, kind of normal running. So just on a flat five minute um, course, I just kind of opened it up and did some tempo and just let everything kind of come together and feel that power, feel that strength, all that eccentric work that I worked on and all the power of the uphills and just kind of let it feel really good and natural feeling since a lot of what I was doing was more unnatural based on kind of true running. Okay. So uh, it was a great workout. And again, start conservatively, especially if you've been on snow a lot this year, like I have been, um, especially when you're running downhill, you want to start conservative. You might get sore at first, but start conservative and keep it, keep it good form. Okay. All right. I'm going to catch a little bit of vitamin D here and do some work and I'll catch you next time. Again, thanks for coming. Thanks for stopping by. Hope this helps and uh, see you next time.